This week is all about the bed prep for us and getting some of our first seeds started for spring. At first, I felt a little overwhelmed by all of my seeds for early March. But as soon as I worked out which ones to put in what size trays, it all came together. I've sown lots of different peas and lettuce varieties, cooler loving herbs like coriander and dill, and I've sown all of my tomatoes, chilies and aubergines, but I'm taking those inside to germinate. It's Saturday today and we have ended up having a bit of a later start than we normally do, but I am determined to get a little bit of work done on my strawberry bed because it is a job that I've been putting off since before Christmas. It's this end of the bed that I've got the most work to do on because it has been completely engulfed with sheep sorrel, which we have a lot of here. But I'm gonna weed out the worst of this as best I can. And then I'm just gonna cover this whole bed in wood chip. And then all the healthy strawberries will grow up through the wood chip from underneath and the wood chip will give them a really welcome feed as well. So I'm not actually sure how many strawberries are left down in this patch of the bed here, but hopefully there's a few and they'll be able to spread into the space. So this end of the bed is gonna need a lot more work and it's taken me a lot longer to do all of this than I had hoped. So what I'm actually gonna do is go and have a little bit of a tidy up over the other end of the bed which is where the better strawberry plants are, so I can get the wood chips down on that area. And then I'll probably come back to this last section another day when I can give it another good bit of time. Oh, this is a toughie. Big old bramble root. Right? Big old bramble root map. So these strawberry plants have been in this bed for probably at least four years. So it'll be interesting to see how they go this year, they were a lot patchier last year and last year was a really hard growing season on everything and this bed was really taken over by sorrel so I'm not feeling so confident as previous years um, that these guys will just spread and fill the gaps like they always have done. We've never added any new plants before the first planting we've just let them kind of trail and run and do their thing and then we've just added wood chips from time to time to pin them down but yeah i'm feeling like there's quite a few gaps so i'll um you know i'll keep an eye on how the plants come up over the next few weeks and maybe i'll have to treat myself to a few new strawberry plants if needed okay last little bit here and then onto the wood chips you could honestly keep going all day with weeding out sorrel so I've got to stop at some point. Don't tell Dan I was dragging the bags, I'll be in trouble. a big one. <sighs> I 
Mein Herr Muff. Got the wheelbarrow now. So the strawberries normally just grow on into the path between these two beds here as well and we're happy to let them do that because it gives us extra strawberries. So I'm just going to go and put a good layer of wood chip onto the path as well because the strawberries will just run and root and grow directly into the wood chip. Um, they seem to really love it actually. Right, so that is about two thirds of the strawberry bed tidied up and I'm going to come back another day and tackle the last bit at the back. But I'm wondering if after the strawberries have finished fruiting this year, if I could possibly grow a cover crop over this bed to help smother out the sorrel that always creeps in after the strawberries weaken and die back a bit. But I'll have to look into what I could plant that um, will suit the time of year and also need to look into whether it will damage the strawberry plants themselves if I grew something tall, say, to um, shade out the, the sorrel underneath. Um, yeah, maybe will that, will that or won't that affect the strawberries as well? So if anybody's got any ideas about that, what kind of cover crops would, could be good or yeah, any information, let us know in the comments below, that would be awesome. I've also been making perennial kale plants for free this week by rooting the shoots from plants that I've previously grown from cuttings. This way we can keep our crop of perennial kale plants going continuously. We find that the plants normally last about two to three years on average. And the stems root really easily. I've done it without using rooting hormone before by just pushing a stalk straight into the ground. So this week is all about bed prep for us and today we're making a start up here on our main growing area and we're going to be clearing and recomposting a lot of these beds and getting them ready for planting. Dan's been clearing the beds where we had our three sisters plantings last year as well. By chopping and dropping all of the corn stems that we left in over winter He's creating a really good mulch that can be left on these beds to break down and protect the soil. As you can also see, I've recently discovered how to film slow-mo shots for this video. Back up in our main growing area, we have got a lot to be getting on with. The beds have still got crops left in them. We've got weeds in the beds, weeds in the path. All the wood chip is nearly bare. We have got a lot to be getting on with. Just climb over the dog. So as you can see, we have got our work cut out for us here today. Dan's getting stuck into all the perennial weeds and the grass that we've let go too far in these beds. Murph's just plucked himself another carrot out. Oh, he's gone in again. Yeah, he's just plucking the carrots out one by one. Are you eating my carrots? Are you eating my carrots? Good boy, stay here, Gutman. The quote is three carrots today, that's it. He's done it already. Come on, Murph, come and sit down. Have some lambs left as well. Look, he's just constantly foraging. He's just found something else. Ah! Oh, come and sit down here.
so the weeding and the clearing is the slow part of this job but I have just dug up um, some chamomile that we don't really want in these growing beds anymore. It was actually, um, I actually planted the wrong variety of chamomile. I'm gonna be growing more German chamomile this year because that's the variety that I need to dry for teas. But I am gonna go and replant these um, in a bank near our new food forest that we're working on where they can just grow and spread and do as they please. So Dan's actually just scraping off the top layer of wood chip from our paths as he's found this to be a really effective way of weeding out all the paths. Then we're going to smooth them back out again afterwards and we'll be adding more wood chip on top. Oh, nice. Thank you very much. Homemade pumpkin soup and delicious organic bread from a local bakery for lunch today. Hang out, Mills. Very nice. Come on, baby girl. Mate, you can't still be hungry. You've been eating carrots all morning. So we are all fueled up and ready to go. And whilst I was just sorting out our lunch, Dan has been up here doing an amazing job on these beds. They are looking so good already. Seriously. This guy is an absolute working machine. He is amazing when it comes to this kind of stuff. I get completely overwhelmed by jobs this big, but he just gets his head down and goes for it. There he is, the workhorse. Give us a wave, Dan. So Dan is making these beds really nicely terraced again now. So this is actually a pretty extreme makeover for this area and we wouldn't normally do this every year. But if you saw one of our videos towards the end of last year, you'll know that this area really got the better of us a bit. Dan was really busy um, off doing some other jobs and I was kind of struggling to keep on top of this area a little bit on my own. Um, so I kind of did what I could and just kept everything at bay but it really has needed this this year. So it's gonna look amazing again for this growing season. So we got as much done as we had time for on these beds yesterday. And we've actually got a possibly two weeks of rain dew coming in from this afternoon. So Dan has had to go off and do some other jobs that need his attention before the rain um, and then the next job that I need to do before we can move up to the next bed is actually harvest all of the parsnips that are still in this third bed here and then hopefully if it doesn't get wet too soon um, a bit later on we're gonna start getting some of the materials down on these lower beds as well but we'll see what happens with the weather. Our work, our progress on these beds may be slowed down over the next while, but hopefully not. And as Murph's just been brushed this morning, he seems to think even more so than normal that he should be laying in the dirt. So as you can see, we have still got a lot of parsnips to harvest from this bed. A lot of them will be past their best, but they still cook up absolutely lovely. It's a nice one. Oh my God. So these parsnips have been in this bed for nearly a year now. I actually sowed these seed, these as seed back usually around the middle of March, but I'm actually going to be um, doing them a lot later this year because sowing them in mid March, which is I think one of the recommended dates, just for the last couple of years, I've been noticing they're just ready far too soon. 
you know, and the weather's still hot and we don't really feel like eating parsnips yet. So this year, I'm actually not going to sow my parsnips until early May. I mean, some of these are coming out um, pretty gnarly and with some big old brown bits on, which I think is caused by the carrot fly um, larvae getting on them as well. But some of them, considering they've been in this bed a year, are actually still coming out really clean as well. And even the ones with the brown bits, most of them, even though they don't look like what we're used to buying in the supermarket, um, by the time you clean them up and cut the bad bits off, they still taste absolutely amazing. So look at these guys, they have literally been in the ground for a year and some of them are coming out absolutely beautiful. It's amazing. Another nice clean one there. Love it. Nature's refrigerator. It's a bit of a gnarly one. Oh, got Mr. Worm in there. Carefully, you want to go back in the soil. That's where you want to be. And I'm sure some of you are wondering why I have grown so many parsnips for just the two of us. There is a bit of a story behind that. And that is because the year before, the season before, I had a complete crop failure with my parsnips. And that I know now was um, pretty much due to no rainfall, no watering um, after I planted the seeds. And so last season, I was determined not to be without parsnips because the year before we had so many parsnips and we literally lived off them. So I was really concerned. It was gonna, it felt like a real shock to not have parsnips, but we managed because there's always something else. Like it happens every year with growing. It's another nice one. Yeah, it happens every year with growing. One year, something would do really well. And then the next year it won't, but something else will grow really well. So I'm slowly learning that we have always got an abundance of something and we never go without. But <laughs> being determined not to be without parsnips again, I decided to dedicate this massive bed to growing parsnips and making sure that I had enough. And so I was very diligent with my seed last year and I grow parsnips from saved seed every year and it's best to grow them from fresh seed as well. So always get new parsnip seed every year or always save your own every year. So yeah, so after I sowed my seed, I made sure I watered this seed. I watered the parsnips pretty regularly until they germinated. And that obviously did the job because even though we had a really bad drought um, for us here in England last year, last summer, the parsnips still grew amazingly in this beautiful deep no dig bed. And as you can see, the other amazing thing about no dig parsnips is that I'm just harvesting them with my hands. It's so cool. I absolutely love it. And they've kept in here sitting happily all winter and this is my harvest of naturally grown parsnips that I'm now mostly going to be processing and giving away over the next few days. But there's plenty I can do with them. I'll make some parsnip chips and I'll chop a lot of them up and freeze them so they're just ready to grab whenever we need them. And any that aren't so good can just go into the compost bin.
So Dan being the madman that he is, has been out here laying some fresh wood chip in the rain. Someone's got to do the work, it never ends. If we have got two weeks of rain ahead of us though, we were keen to get some fresh wood chip down on the paths at least, if nothing else, uh, so they don't get all um, muddy and, and yucky. So Dan is doing a great job, as always, at working super fast to get everything done. Mm -hmm. 